Finally, I'm getting to this topic. Portfolio. The topic all you have been waiting for. The paramount piece to any UX design, product design internships, or full-time jobs applications. Whether you already have a portfolio or not, this video should give you some more clarity on what a portfolio is for, how is it being used or valued or assessed in a hiring process, and lastly, what are some of the things that you might want to include in your portfolio at a very fundamental, hierarchical, structural level, and of course, some FAQs that might puzzle you or might have been puzzling you for a while. That's quite a lot of cover, isn't it? Let's roll the intro! Good morning everyone, my name is Justine and I'm a designer working in Silicon Valley. This is the first episode of the portfolio series and I will start with more higher level overview of what a portfolio means to you and then in the future episodes I will cover more of the nuances, details, tips, tricks, best practices, do's, don'ts so that you can improve the portfolio in a more practical fundamental way. And as for today's video, Here's the breakdown. Number one, I'm going to really briefly cover what is a portfolio, what it is for. And next, I will cover how a portfolio is being used in the hiring process. After that, it should give you some implications of how to structure your portfolio, which will be point number three, along with some of my personal takes on that regard. And lastly, FAQs, some puzzling questions. All right, without further ado, let's dive right in. Number one. What is a portfolio? Portfolio is essentially a collection of your best work. Remember, I say collection, which means not just one, and I say best, meaning you're not going to include your subpar, your concept work, your upcoming work. Make sure to include something that you like to work on, that you're proud of, the project that you want to do as if that was your full-time job. And of course, the type of projects that you want to do more that showcase your best skills possible. And of course, a portfolio should be able to represent what kind of designer you are by just looking at your portfolio. So if you have a lot of visual design work, I can really tell that you are a visual designer. If your portfolio has a lot of interactivity, prototypes, maybe you are an interactive designer, so on and so forth. In the hiring process, if your portfolio passes the bar, likely you will pass the bar. The opposite is also true. If your portfolio doesn't pass, you are probably not going to go too far in the hiring process. Speaking of hiring, it's a great segue to number two. How will the portfolio be used? What it is for? Who is going to use it? How should we use it in the best way possible? Indeed, obviously, a portfolio could help you get a UX design, product design internship, or a full-time job. We can dig a little deeper. A portfolio is also a way, a tool, a platform, a mean to communicate your work so that your work can convince your potential employers to hire you. Does it sound like a design project to you? It, it really is, to be honest. You have already set up your need or goal, which is to communicate your work effectively so that your work can convince people to hire you. Which means next, we need to find out who is the audience? Who is the end users of this portfolio? And the answer is kind of obvious too. Recruiters and hiring managers or design managers. And however, as you know, different type of users tend to have different behaviors. For example, recruiters, they might just have a few scrolls, just go through the portfolio really quickly to just check that you have one, your link works. They often cannot really tell how good the quality is, but just have a better sense of Okay, this candidate has a portfolio and it seems fine. And you should definitely pass this recruiter screening of, of your portfolio because it's just so easy to pass. If you cannot pass, somehow you found out about that, something must be really wrong about portfolio. And next will be hiring manager. They will be the people that tend to spend more time to look at maybe one project or two on your portfolio. And of course, they're not going to read 90% to 99% of your text. So don't spend so much time crafting the best paragraph. Well, of course you should, but don't put your focus in a text. That's what I'm trying to say. And of course, they will be more picky on your visual quality, your storytelling skills, the logic of your interaction flow, whether it makes sense or not. 
and how well you can simplify your design concept in a readable and digestible way. For example, if I have to read your paragraph or look at your images like multiple times, three, four, five times, in order to get what your concept is, then red flag. They will also look at whether you can frame the problem clearly. Is it a business problem or is it a design problem? Now we understand who the end users, the target group, the audience are, we can really take a look at number three. How can we structure or what are some of the possible ways to structure a portfolio? What is the architecture like? Let's go step by step. In order to structure your portfolio successfully, we first need to know what are we structuring? What are we putting together? What content are we dealing with, right? So let's figure out what is the minimum amount of content that you might want to include in your portfolio. And here is what I think. First, you definitely should have your projects, right? Because portfolio is the best collection of your work. So you want your portfolio to showcase your best work, your best collection of design works, showcase your design skill. And then of course, your ID, your identity, contact information, your name, who you are, right? Your email, contact info, phone number, that's contact info. Again, no physical address needed. And some optional ones are like, about maybe three or four lines of a paragraph to introduce like what kind of designer you are, what your interests are, what you specialize in, what you want to focus on, and maybe a resume section or a resume link or resume tab. But really projects and contact info are the two things that you really need. And that's it actually, that's the minimum amount of content that you need, nothing complicated. It actually shouldn't be complicated because we are talking about high level here. We're not going really into details yet. Now, since we have figured out the minimum amount of content that you will need, then we can really look at the structure, the layout, pages, tabs. We can sort those minimum content into what pages or tabs on the website. In fact, there are actually many combinations of this layout or arrangements. You can go with a single page. It actually works. Everything is on one page but segmented vertically. So the pro of this design choice or direction is that you don't need to tap another icon or another link to go into a different page in order to view different content. Everything you have is a scroll. And because of that, the con is that it's a long scroll. If you have a lot of content, your page will be really long. So if you were to go with a single page layout, then think about what is important to you. Is containing everything on one page, the experience you want to convey. Minimizing tabs is one of your goals for people who go to your website. And also consider what content or how much content you have on your portfolio. Because if you only have three projects or one project, then your single page layout won't be that long because you don't have much content. But if you have nine projects, then you could really extend your page length. Or you can go with a more traditional multi-page layout. You have one tab for project, one tab for resume, all the contact info there. Or you have one tab for project, one tab for about, and have a resume link into it. Or just one project, just one about. Or maybe even just one project and no about and have your contact info at the bottom of the screen. Or maybe you have one of each. You have one project, one about, one resume. And of course, all other custom blends that you can possibly think of, just like the coffees. Part four, FAQs. As you notice a pattern here, a project section or tab is always in its own section, which is pretty obvious, right? Your portfolio is the best work and your work are shown in projects. So you really have to have one section dedicated solely for your project. And at the same time, that leads to question number one. How many projects should you include in your UX design product design portfolio? Well, the answer is, Depends. And let me elaborate and let's start with the higher end number. I typically would not put more than nine projects. Nine should really well capture your interests or specialization at this point. And also because I use the square format for my thumbnail images so that I can have a three by three grid, which will be nine projects that fits neatly on the portfolio and it looks incredibly simple but rigid. It feels solid. And then of course the low end will be one project. If you have one really fantastic project that you're so proud of, that you win a lot of awards and all those media outlets pick up your design, it went viral, it got translated into different language in different design blocks all over the world, then 
this project is a significant piece in your portfolio. It can carry a lot of weight. Trust me, a lot of weight. And it will for sure serve you pretty far. You don't really need nine because this one is so strong. Let's move up two projects. If you have two really strong ones, well, not as good as viral projects, but two strong ones, two solid projects. That can prove you can repeatedly execute well. You can repeatedly create good design. It's not a fluke. You're reliable. You're consistent, which I would say maybe it's the baseline. And then if you move up to three projects in portfolio, that can really show the diversity in your portfolio, the different skill sets, the different platforms. Maybe if you have three projects, one would be for desktop, one is for mobile, one is for tablet or wearables, Apple Watch, Fitbit. Then you understand different constraints on device sizes, which is of course a good thing to know. Nowadays when I'm working in Silicon Valley, I still have to pick up some of the things here and there regarding device sizes and those nuances. So if you already learned that in school or practiced it in school projects, great, excellent. Or maybe you have three different types of projects, uh, one or two on traditional mobile apps. And then the third one will be on a new medium, it's on AR, on gesture related, something more experiential, something spatial. And then all those in between, four, five, six, seven, eight, those projects, it will just show more breadth if they are all super high quality. Let me repeat, they are all super high quality. Then I don't see why not include all of them in your portfolio. Or I don't see how come you cannot get a UX design, product design internship or job because you have nice, really good projects. That's amazing. I don't even have nine really good projects on my portfolio at this moment. What is not good is that you put nine projects just for the sake of putting more projects up, filling up the space. That is a red flag. Something that you really need to know, it's okay, it's really okay to have less projects on your portfolio. And of course, the project remaining on your portfolio should be good projects. If you have more, but they are bad, they can only dilute the focus in your portfolio. Have you heard of less is more? Your portfolio is the perfect place to embody this philosophy of simplicity. So generally speaking, I would say include between three to nine projects. The standard is to just have three really good projects that can prepare you for everything. Internships, co-ops, first full-time job, one or two good projects should be okay, should be good for internships. And speaking for myself, I got my first internship with only one kind of solid UX project and maybe two for the rest of them. So if I can do it, the same could apply to you. FAQ number two, this should be an interesting one. What should the landing screen be? So when you type in your portfolio URL, portfolio link, what should people see on the web page, the landing screen? Which section do you put? Projects? Resume, about, I talk about impression a lot in some of my previous videos. You only have one shot to make your first impression. So your landing screen, it's really the place to make your first impression, make your good first impression, right? But here's the thing. I think the answer to this question actually varies from person to person, depending on what you want to focus on, what you want to demonstrate, what you want to showcase, what you want to tell people about you. And there could be many right answers. I personally put a special screen, a special landing screen, what I call a playground to showcase and highlight some of my creative thinking and interests, some of my coding, prototyping skills, my playfulness, has some motions, animation, and different layers, the texture, and it has the grand revelation which tied to an Easter egg that I am hiding behind this screen. When you land on this screen, it really sets the tone and atmosphere and the mood for everything which is part of my surprise and delight personality and style also conveys some sense of mystery or make people curious, that mysterious layer behind things, that Easter egg element. And yet I have to confess and admit, sometimes in some applications, I forgot how many of them, I did put my work, my project URL instead of my just landing screen in the application. So I kind of have both. Because if I know they want to look at my projects, I would just take them there. I, I save them some time. But if I share my portfolio to some other people, like my friends or some second degree connections or just for an intro purpose, then I just put on my .com link to my landing screen. So maybe the general rule of thumb I can give you is if you're not sure or you don't want to think you want to spend time on it, 
just put your project page as the landing page. That's not gonna go wrong, it's very safe, it's the most important thing in your portfolio, you just take your audience right there. What I would caution you or slightly flag is that if you plan to put your photo on your landing screen, personally speaking, if I am hiring and a candidate put their photo front and center on the landing screen, First, I would try to avoid it or I would ignore it, even though they are very attractive. Because that's not the point. I go to your portfolio not to see a photo of you. I go to your portfolio to see your design work, your visual design, your UI design, UX design, your product design work. And in fact, I would question their prioritization skills because they seem to put their photo before their work. Do they think their projects are less important or they're not confident about their work so that they want to use an attractive photo to compensate that? It's not unreasonable to think like me because all the hiring is to look for relevant information. Your design project is highly relevant. Your photo, not very much. Well, at least that's what it is in the US. But I heard in Europe, you do put your photo uh, up front in your resume. So it might be a whole different road that I don't know of. But we're talking about the US here. To be fair and clarify, I do have a photo of me in my portfolio. But it's not on the landing screen. It's not on the portfolio tab. It's in the about tab, which makes sense. It's the about section. It's not the cutest, not the most attractive photos. And I will argue it's one of the most mysterious photos I ever have because I am glitching. And it ties back to how I want to set the mood and tone that tied to my landing screen, black background that I kind of blend in, but glitching, have that highlight accent color. But again, it doesn't matter that much. I'm selling my work, I'm not selling my face. My portfolio is the collection of my best work as a designer. It's not a portfolio for my modeling career. We cover a lot today. And just to quickly recap, here are some of the main takeaways. The portfolio is the collection of your best work, your best projects to showcase your design skills, find interest, focus on having at least two great projects that you put a lot of care, craft, and refinement in. And if you're new, don't worry too much about having a good photo, writing a, the about paragraph, or style your website, or anything that I mentioned above. They are merely distraction before you put up your very first project, your very first thorough project on your portfolio. After that, you will get a better feel of how much time and commitment it will take for you to work on your portfolio. And then that new understanding should give you an idea on how to take your portfolio to the next level from there. That's all I have for today. Thank you guys for watching. If you find this video useful and insightful, please go ahead and destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm. If you want to see more UX design videos like this, also consider smash the subscribe button as well. Doing so will tremendously help the channel and motivate me to produce more high quality content on the road. Have fun following your passion and keep designing a better future. See you on the next video. Cheers.